There's an old saying, a car loses value the minute you drive it off the lot. But when it comes to electric vehicles, well, that saying doesn't just hold true, it's actually amplified. See, the depreciation hit that EVs take in the first few years can be absolutely brutal. Some lose over 70% of their value in just five years. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? See, EVs are supposed to represent the future. Lower maintenance, cheaper fueling and cutting edge technology. But the second the owners start looking to sell or to trade them in, well, that shiny future turns into a financial gut punch. So today, we're going to break down exactly why EVs depreciate so much faster than gas cars. We're going to show you what the data shows for 2025 and how this could shape the entire future of the electric vehicle industry. And trust me, some of these numbers are going to shock you. But just before we do take a deep dive, it's imperative you hit that like button and subscribe so that you get notified the minute we produce another game-changing video that affects your choice of car or SUV. And I promise you'll appreciate it. So buckle up and let's plunge straight in. So first off, every vehicle depreciates. It's absolutely unavoidable. Now, on average, a new car loses about 46% of its value in the first five years. So that's nearly half your money gone. But with EVs, well, sadly, it's a lot worse. According to the latest 2025 study from IC Cars, the average electric vehicle loses 59% of its value in that same time frame, and some fall even faster. So take the discontinued Jaguar I-Pace. It's plummeted 75% in value over five years. The Tesla Model S, the Model X, and the Model Y have each dropped between 58% and 63%. Even the more affordable EVs like the Nissan Leaf are among the worst performers, losing well over half their original price in just a few years. Now, in comparison, the least depreciating cars on the market, we've got models like the Porsche 911 or the Toyota Tacoma, well, they hold their value so well that they almost look like investments. So the big question is, why are EVs tanking while traditional cars stay strong? So let's talk about the reasons. So first of all, there's not just one culprit. It's a combination of technology, incentives, perception, and economics. So first, let's start with technology evolution. The pace of EV innovation is lightning fast. Battery chemistry, motor efficiency, and range, well, they've all improved dramatically within just a few model years. So that means an EV that's three years old already well, it looks ancient compared to the latest one with fastest charging and a much longer range. So imagine buying an iPhone 11 when the iPhone 16 just launched. Sure, it still works fine, but basically nobody wants it anymore. That's exactly what's happening to early generation EVs. For example, over the last decade, the maximum EV range has nearly doubled and the median range, well, that's actually tripled. Now, on top of that, many automakers are switching to 800-volt architectures, which can cut charging time nearly in half compared to those older 400-volt systems. So if your EV charges slower and it drives shorter distances, well, sadly, it becomes harder to sell. Second, incentives. Now, believe it or not, the 7,500 federal tax credit that used to help buyers actually hurts the resale value. Now, here's why. When a new buyer gets that big incentive, the car's perceived new value actually drops. So when you go to sell your used EV, well, the market already assumes it should be cheaper. It's a built-in depreciation. Now, those incentives ended in September 2025, but their effects will ripple on for years and years. Now, third, market supply and leasing. Now, leasing became the go-to method to get EVs into customers' hands, especially for those models that didn't qualify for federal rebates when purchased overnight. So by late 2025, 
over 70% of new EVs were leased, compared to just 17% two years prior. Now that's created a tsunami of off-lease EVs flooding the used market, driving prices even lower. In fact, by 2028, nearly a million used EVs per year will hit dealer lots, according to analysts. Now, fourth up, we have the luxury buyers. Now, the EV segment is still dominated by expensive models. We've got Teslas, we've got Mercedes EQs, we've got Porsches, and we've got Lucids. Luxury vehicles always depreciate faster than economy models because buyers who can afford them tend to trade in frequently, chasing the newest features. So when you combine luxury with rapidly evolving technology, well, you get a perfect storm for value loss. And finally, consumer fear. Now, many used car buyers still worry about battery degradation, charging infrastructure, and the cost of future repairs. Now, even though studies show that battery health is much better than people think, perception always drives prices. And fear of the unknown, well, that keeps resale values right down. So let me ask you this. If you were buying used, would you gamble on an older EV with a high-tech battery system or play it safe with a reliable gas or hybrid car? Do me a favor, guys. Drop your thoughts below. I'm really curious where you stand on this. So now, this rapid depreciation doesn't just hurt owners. It's got major implications for the entire EV industry. See, automakers are desperate to bring EVs into the mainstream. But when consumers see that their resale value is collapsing, well, it makes them think twice before actually buying. Now, analysts worry this could slow down EV adoption entirely. If the market views electric vehicles as bad investments, well, manufacturers will have to offer even more incentives, and that further worsens the depreciation cycle. It's a feedback loop that could take years and years to fix, but here's the good news. As the federal tax credits expire and the market stabilizes, experts expect depreciation rates to improve slightly over the next three years. Fewer discounts means a more natural pricing structure, and that could really help future models retain value longer. Still, one factor remains absolutely clear. EVs will always age like tech, not like transportation. Now, what that means is faster innovation cycles, shorter lifespans in resale markets, and a steeper learning curve for consumers trying to time their purchases. So what can you do if you're considering an EV, but you don't want to take that massive hit? Simple, buy smart or lease strategically. Now, if you're the type who trades cars every three to four years, lease your EV. That way, the depreciation risk is on the manufacturer or the dealer, not on you. Now, if you're planning to keep your car long term, buy and hold it. See, once an EV reaches around eight years old, well, it's hit the bottom of its depreciation curve. After that, the value loss slows dramatically. In other words, if you buy and keep your EV until the wheels practically fall off, while well, your long-term cost evens out or even beats a gas car. And finally, don't underestimate perception. EV technology will continue to mature. Battery prices will keep falling and public education will eventually catch up. So by the end of this decade, depreciation may not be as steep, but for now, it's the biggest hidden cost in electric car ownership. So what do you think, guys? Are EVs a brilliant innovation that just needs time to stabilize? Or are they a financial trap that's hiding behind a green image? Comment below and let me know your take. And by the way, if you found this video insightful, smash that like button and subscribe because it helps us reach more drivers who want to make smarter financial decisions when it comes to cars, credit, and the economy. So until next time, guys, drive safe, stay informed, and I'll see you guys on the next one.